Hi there, I'm recording this video to show you what is the potential of the Angular Cookbook 2nd edition and how people can actually get benefit from it and get into the Angular world covering a lot of cool topics that they need almost every day. Let's get started. I'm going to just go with the recipes which are finalized and this is the final version when you have finished the recipe. So this one goes with Angular Signals and this whole app is working with signals. For example, if you want to add a new item, you're adding that within the signal then you also have the computed property right here which basically tracks of how many tasks have been finished versus not you can also see this one where when you finish you see a message and that also runs with computed as well or sorry for an effect instead of computed then we also have things like route animations for example here if you go from one page to another how do you really implement those animations so the recipe goes in depth on how to do that and then how it actually works so it's really really cool then we also have this right here which is using the http exponential back off strategy so when for example you're trying to request some data it doesn't work then it tries again 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 a few times to the point where it just stops after a maximum time. So this one basically retries three times and every next iteration or request basically takes more time before retrying. So this is called the exponential back off strategy. And you'll see that now it takes a few seconds for the last one to basically do that. And then finally we have a message that's shown here as well. Then we also have this route preloading strategy recipe in which you basically learn how to implement preloading strategies based on certain conditions. For example, right now, if I log in as an admin, not only I will load the admin bundle, but also the admin campaign bundle. So if I click it, you can see that I loaded the admin component right here and then also the admin campaign component. Same goes with employee. If I go to the employee now, you're going to see that we do have the bucket already loaded but actually you can't go to the employee unless you actually log out and log in. So if I log out and then log in as employee, now you can see that both the employee component and employee campaign component both are loaded. And if you just refresh directly on the campaign, then you'll see that we load both the employee com campaign, which is right now the route, and you can also see the employee component and then the bucket itself, which we render as well. So those can be handled based on the preloading strategy. Then we also have the form arrays. So in this one, you can basically start creating projects and enter URL, and then you can just keep clicking this plus button to add more and more. And you can see that on the right side, we are essentially filling this whole form, the reactive form that we have, having a form array containing all the new things that you can see right here. And as soon as I add anything, it's immediately updating as well. So this is how you can work with form arrays. Then we also have our own custom form control, which we can use to submit with our own custom UI. For example, in this one, this works with both the ng model and also the form, the reactive form as well. So in this one, if I go and inspect, you will see that upon clicking, for example, three right now, you can also see that I can click five, two, but let's say if it's two and if I say test, on submitting, you can see that I get the forms value and this is the actual Angular forms value. If I go to the Angular debug tools, you can see that this is a form and I can actually find out the value of the form right here. So if I go to app home, I can actually see the review form. And in this one, you can see the value being the comment and test as you can see. So this is directly bound to the Angular reactive forms. And if you wanted to use, you can use with ng model. Then we also have some things with the Angular CDK. So this one goes through the list box, which means that if I just press a bunch of times the tab, then you can see that I've now focused on that one. So I can actually use it with my keyboard instead of clicking the, the mouse. And this follows the standards of accessibility because it's implemented by the Angular CDK team. Of course, great job. So if I just move around, you can see that this is being highlighted. But if I press enter then the value is selected and this is by design i can also jump by just typing the value for example i know that this one is blue so if i just start typing blu you can see automatically it jumped to that particular item so this is really really accessible and you go through the recipe to learn how this works then we also implemented our own custom pointy little pot popovers and that means that if i mouse over and click, you can see that there is this menu right here, but this pointy part is covered in the recipe and you will not find it easily on the internet. This not only uh, you know shows it in the right direction, but if there's no space, it also shows it in the other direction as well, as you can see, and the, and the pointiness of the popover are directly reflected there as well. So this is super cool as well. 
Then we also talk about the performance optimization using deferred blocks. For example, right now I have a bunch of components on this view, but I don't want to load all of them in the beginning, which makes the performance really, really fast. So if I go to the inspector and for example, if I go to network and refresh right now, you're going to see that we are trying to load the Star Wars component at the moment, the Star Wars character component, but the page has much more components as well. So if I click here, if I start going down, you're going to see that now the drag and drop component has been loaded because of the deferred block that we are using. So we loaded the drag and drop components, which includes the folder list and file list component, which can be used. For example, if I go here, I'm going to basically zoom out a bit. And here you can see that I can just drag and drop these things. By the way, the drag and drop recipe is a separate recipe in the Angular CDK as well that you can try out as well. But if I scroll further down, you'll see more components. So here, for example, user list just came into being. And this loaded this particular bundle, which contains everything related to this one, but not only on scroll, we can also load when we are mouse overing a component. For example, there is one component that we show when we mouse over a card, so for example, this one. And as soon as I did, you can see that I got this user card back component loaded. So this is being used with the defer block. Then let's move to the web workers. This is super, super cool. I've optimized this whole UI based on web workers because there's a lot of performance that goes into this. I have added a heavy function that executes on each particular card. But if I refresh, you'll see that instantly everything is rendered. And we also have just one ge color generation count. When we start the recipe, we have this more than seven times as soon as the app starts. And whenever you click somewhere, it basically keeps increasing. But right now you can see that the zone is not affecting this at all. So only when the component itself is re-rendered or the reference to either the array or the object itself changes, only then we re-render, which improves the performance so many times. For example, if I start searching I rin, you can see that I found this person, now the count is three. If I go back to the list now, now the count should be four and the rest of them have just rendered twice because I searched that person. And finally, we have a recipe in which you build an app shell for your progressive web application. What this basically means is that, for example, if I'm requesting the data the first time, you're gonna find that, for example, if I do a hard reload, you will see that all of this data basically came from the server. But as soon as I refresh the page, you're gonna see that the next time, everything actually comes from the service worker, which means that if I go and turn this to offline, you will still see all the data and the app would be usable. For example, if I refresh now, you can see that I can actually see the whole app working. Now, anything that has not been fetched, of course, will not be able uh, to be accessible. But apart from that, everything should be working. Now, that also means that if I enable network just like normal, but if I disable JavaScript, which means that there's no Angular on the front end, you will still see the UI. That is where the app shell comes in. So if I say disable JavaScript and refresh, you can see that the UI still is there. We have a header. We have the the search bar there, right? We also have all these boxes which actually show the user that, okay, this is an app instead of a blank screen. But obviously, since there's no JavaScript, you cannot put any input in there. There's no request being made. There's no data coming back. But this is the minimal app shell that you get out of the box and you learn in the recipe how to actually build that. So I hope this video was useful for you to understand what is in the book. And this is just 10 of the recipes that I've showed you. And the book has about 80 recipes. So grab your copy of the Angular Cookbook, second edition. People are already liking it. The first edition has had more than 48 ratings on Amazon, having a 4.3 out of 5. And also the GitHub repo has reached 100 stars. So I'm really happy what people are doing with this and help me share the word. Thank you.